The KKK were involved in a rally that left some in California injured. Bombing in Baghdad killed dozens of natives, while the Supreme Court is preparing to make a decision on an abortion case. Welcome to Take 30 News. Keeping our state informed. Broadcasting from the home of the Bulldogs. Now, from the University Television Studios of Mississippi State University, this is Take 30 News. Welcome to Take 30 News. I'm Jordan Martin. And I'm Adam Bowles. A report of a domestic violence case led to the shooting of an officer in Virginia and the victim. This is Take 30's top story. Ashley Gwendon, a 28-year-old police officer, was fatally shot in Woodbridge, Virginia, Saturday on her first day on the job. She was answering a discernment call in which the suspect's wife, Crystal, was killed and two other officers were injured. Ronald William Harrington is accused of shooting all three officers and illegally shooting his wife. Hamilton appeared on court Monday on multiple charges. He'll be held without bail and the hearings will begin on April 18th. Hundreds of people attended Gwendon's funeral service yesterday afternoon. Three people have been stabbed and 13 others have been arrested during a KKK rally in Anaheim on Saturday. Several protesters confronted the Klan, which sparked a fight. One of the protesters was seen lying on the ground, bleeding and crying that he had been stabbed. A Klansman in handcuffs told a police officer that he stabbed the protester in self-defense. Two other protesters were stabbed, one with a knife and the other with an unidentified object. Police say that several Klan members jumped into an SUV and sped off leaving three others to fend for themselves. Two bombings in a crowded Baghdad market killed dozens of Iraqi citizens this past Sunday. At 3.30 p.m., a marked motorcycle exploded in the Sadar City District. Shortly after, while people were attending to the victims, a suicide bomber ran into the crowd, detonating a second bomb. So far, 73 are dead, making this the deadliest attack this year. The culprit ISIS is claiming responsibility for bombings. Despite this attack, Iraqi Prime Minister Hadar al Abadi posted on Facebook saying they will not stop us. The latest in a series of attacks on schools in Beijing left several children injured. An attacker stabbed six boys and four girls with a knife while they were outside an elementary school. The children were taken to a local hospital and treated. None of the children died, but two sustained severe injuries. The stabber reportedly took his own life after the attack. Authorities have yet to find a motive. Although China does not often have violent crimes, there has been an outbreak of knife and ax attacks against children in recent years. Huntsville, Alabama will be the scene of potentially groundbreaking tornado research. Vortex Southeast will host 40 scientists from around the country and will implement different researching techniques to better understand the development of southern tornadoes. These methods include drones, mobile radar, and other ways to better understand the unique characteristics of tornadoes that develop in the south. The scientists will also try to raise awareness of tornadoes in the southern states to ask that people take the proper precautions if tornadoes are in the forecast. The researching events will take place through the months of March and April. The Quiet Home was issued a search warrant on Colonel Muldrow Avenue. In Starkville, Mississippi local police and U.S. Marshals arrived on scene around here three o'clock where witnesses and also saw them confiscate several pounds of marijuana and a large sum of cash which was over one thousand dollars. Arrests were made in the home while suspects cars were being impounded outside. While bags of evidence were being taken by police and also and U.S. Marshals, witnesses also saw police take the suspects away immediately using any force that was necessary. January 25th, this quiet home was issued a search warrant on Colonel Woodrow Avenue in Starfield, Mississippi. Local police and U.S. Marshals arrived on scene around 3 o'clock, where witnesses also saw them confiscate several pounds of marijuana and a large sum of cash, which was over $1,000. 
Arrests were made in the home while the suspect's cars were being impounded outside. While bags of evidence were being taken by police and U.S. Marshals, witnesses also saw police take the suspects away immediately using any force that was necessary. Yeah, so I was walking out and I saw the U.S. Marshals completely surrounding the house and they came around the back door where they uh, had busted in, busted in the door and I guess they detained them inside. Unfortunately, Mississippi State University was represented as two MSU students were arrested that day. At Mississippi State, thousands of students walk across this campus going to class every day, but if they're not careful, that walk can come to an abrupt stop due to a run-in with the law. MSU students Alex Hollingsworth and Austin Waddell were both arrested and were both in jeopardy of the sun setting on their time here as a Bulldog. Take 30 News went to the missions headquarters and the College of Business to understand how students who apply for the university and sign for scholarships and loans could easily have that taken away due to breaking the law. We talked to Jeffrey Rupp, former mayor of Columbus and the director of outreach, who explains what kind of punishment students could face and how their decisions could affect the university. The great thing about college is all of a sudden young adults get to make their own decisions. The challenge is you've got to make the right decisions. When I was mayor of a city, I was concerned about every citizen uh, that lived in the city. The university is very much like a city. We are a community. So what one individual does has an impact on the rest of us. Unfortunately, at Mississippi and at Mississippi State, it's not acceptable behavior. The students have an obligation to know that, and whether they agree with the laws or not, they have an obligation to follow them or suffer the consequences, which could be a loss of scholarships, could be getting kicked out of school, and worst case scenario, jail time. And jail time was the punishment that day as Hongsworth awaits a municipal court appearance and Waddell was cited with a citation. MSU urges students to reflect the morals of we ring true both on and off campus. This is Adam Bowles with Tate 30 News. A student who seemed like he was a role model among his classmates was unexpectedly arrested last week. Harrisburg police say he was actually a 23-year-old man from Ukraine using a fake name. Fellow students knew him as Asher Potts, but he is actually Archer Samarin. Samarin stayed in the U.S. after his visa expired, and police say he had obtained a false Social Security card, undisclosed U.S. documents. Police say he was charged with theft, identity theft, and tampering with public records. His first hearing is scheduled for March 4th and is being held at the Dawson County Prison on a $2,000 bail. After the break, Shelby Anderton will clue us into how the MSU women and men's basketball team did in their last home game. Stay tuned. Based on recent survey, Mississippi is ranked third as worst state when it comes to littering. Hey! It is up to you to make a difference. Seriously, the trash can's right there. How do you miss that anyway? Do what's right and help prevent littering. Keep Mississippi clean and pick it up. One, two, three, cigarettes, four, five, six, packs, 10, 15, 20 milligrams of nicotine per day. Yellow teeth, bad breath, disease, cancer, repeat until... Bam.
are watching Take 30 News on now MST. Now Shelby Anderton with our sports. I hear we have a new athletic superstar on campus. We do. Marta Frieda, she is setting records for our MSU track team. Mississippi State senior Marta Friedis was named the 2016 SEC Indoor Track and Field Champion in the mile run on Saturday. Friedis set a personal best time of 4 minutes and 38 seconds. Her time ranks third in MSU record books. Friedis finished fourth in the 3,000 meter race and broke the school record with a time of 9 minutes and 22 seconds. The Bulldogs finished ninth in the championships with 42 total points. Host Arkansas took home the victory with 110 points. This is Freitas' first SEC indoor title. The Bulldogs will head to the NCAA championship in Birmingham on March 10th. The Lady Bulldogs finish off their regular season with the win against Alabama on senior night. Lone senior Sharice Williams had a good start to senior night with the block and steal in the early moments of the game. Mississippi State struggled to score in the first half but went into halftime with a lead of 28-25. Leading scoring of the night, Dominique Dillingham ended the game with 17 points, as well as four steals. With this win, the Lady Bulldogs are tied for second place for the SEC tournament and will have a first and second round bye. Williams and the rest of the team celebrated their last game and win before signing autographs. Bless y'all here at Mississippi State with a fine group of young ladies. And uh, for this group to fight, scratch, and claw and get themselves to 11 and 5 have a chance to tie for second, no worse than third uh, in the SEC is really quite an accomplishment. I'm really proud of them. The Mississippi State men's basketball team caught the 23 and 6 South Carolina Gamecocks a little bit by surprise this weekend. The Bulldogs came ready to play against a tough South Carolina team while scoring on fast break after fast break and Gavin Ware posting up strong in the paint. The team had a solid lead according a solid lead into the second half that continued throughout the game. The team seemed as motivated as ever to win, maybe thanks to an appearance from the 1996 Mississippi State Final Four team. They managed to pull out a 68 and 55 to 8 win. The Bulldogs now head into the last week of the regular season winning three out of the last four games. The Bulldogs will face Ole Miss in Oxford tonight at 6 p.m. Stephen Curry hits a game-winning 32-footer with a .6 left on the clock to help lift the Golden State Warriors over the Oklahoma City Thunder in overtime. With a score of 121 to 118, Stephen Curry finished the game with a game-high 46 points. Curry, as usual, was on fire from behind the three-point line and made 12 three-pointers throughout the game. The Warriors star Brett broke the NBA record for most three-pointers in a season with 288, with 25 games left in the NBA regular season. The Cleveland, Ca the Cleveland Cavaliers are at a level of concern following their 100-13-99 loss in the Washington Wizards on Sunday. The Cavs have lost three out of the last four games, even though LeBron James did not play. Cavs players did not use that as an excuse for their horrible play. During the game, Cavs guard J.R. Smith knew that the team wasn't playing up to par and said, quote, we weren't playing the way we were supposed to play. We weren't executing our offense. We damn sure weren't playing defense, end quote. San Francisco 49ers offensive lineman Anthony Davis will try to return to the NFL next season. Davis took last year off to let his mind and body heal. He retired last June. Davis felt it was a good time to give his body and brain a chance to heal from all the contact. He wants to continue to have good health after his playing days are over. He felt it was what's best for his body and mental health. He has applied for reinstatement for the 2016 season. When asked if he could come back to the 49ers, he simply said, guaranteed. University of Virginia cornerback Maurice Kennedy honored the slain police officer Ashley Gwinden on Monday at the NFL Combine. Kennedy paid tribute to Gwinden with the passage, Officer Gwinden, 22716, Never Forget, was written on each of his cleats he wore while running his 40-yard dash, where he ran a 4.49. He will auction off the shoes and the money will go to a memorial fund established for Gwinden's family. Kennedy's cousin is a police officer and was, his aunt was murdered in 2002. Mississippi State's baseball team completed a weekend sweep Sunday afternoon. 
The Bulldogs went 4-0 during a three-team tournament this weekend. On Sunday, Zach Houston got to start on the mound versus Nichols State as he turned in 10 strikeouts and earned no runs during an 8-0 route. The highly praised MLB prospect was able to locate his fastball with precision and great velocity, hitting 94 miles per hour consistently. The Bulldogs shined offensively, especially in the first and second inning. The Bulldogs scored six runs in the first two innings in large part due to Brent Rooker, as he had a bases loaded double that scored two. As a result, the Bulldogs good play, they moved up in national polls, going up from number 24 team in the country to number 19. Two pitchers from West Lauderdale High School have verbally committed to MSU baseball. Hunter Eldridge and Chance Denson attended the MSU baseball camp in January, January where they left a, quite an impression on the MSU coaches. The right-handed pitchers showed off their impressive fastballs. Eldridge said he felt like Mississippi State was home and he is eager to work with Wes Johnson because, quote, he puts a lot of kids in the pros. In the past three years, Johnson had seven players drafted within the first 10 rounds. Coming up next, Grace Graves will interview a local charity that is raising money for kids with cancer. Based on recent survey, Mississippi is ranked third as worst state when it comes to littering. Hey! It is up to you to make a difference. Seriously, the trash can's right there. How do you miss that anyway? Do what's right and help prevent littering. Keep Mississippi clean and pick it up. One, two, three, cigarettes. Four, five, six, packs, 10, 15, 20 milligrams of nicotine per day. Yellow teeth, bad breath, disease, cancer, repeat until BAM. Welcome back to Take 30 News. With us today, we have Drew Lantonio, the head ambassador for Love Your Melon at Mississippi State University. Thanks for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All right, and so for those of us who don't know, can you tell us a little about Love Your Melon? Yeah, of course. Um, Love Your Melon is an apparel company that works with fundraising money for pediatric cancer research. So when you buy a hat, 50% of the proceeds goes towards two companies. 25% of that 50 is donated to CureSearch which um, raises money for like finding the cure for cancer, and Pinky Swear, which finances um, you know economic relief for families going fighting, you know, paying off bills for chemotherapy and whatever comes with it. And then the other 50 goes towards back to production costs. You know, we, whenever we sell hats online, we always sell out within like 15 minutes, so it's always a struggle with that. And also funding campus crews, sending me you know supply packets, superhero costumes, and stuff like that. So. That's what Love Your Melon is. Okay. And can you tell me a little bit more about the superhero costumes? Yeah, of course. Um, so when you buy a hat, you click on Mississippi State as a little drop-down box when you're checking out. And with, with the, as many of those as I get, those are considered credits. So more credits I get, the more you know, options I'm allowed to do with Love Your Melon. So once you hit a certain level, um, they'll send you superhero costumes. And with that, you can go visit a child's home or in the hospital, wherever like, you can find a child who's willing to, you know, whose family's willing to have us. So we dress up in superhero costumes just you know, to make their a little more exciting, you know, give them a smile for the day. So that's what we do. Okay. And um, what inspired you to become an ambassador? Um, well, I found out about the organization when I was in high school. Um, my mother bought me a hat for Christmas, a uh, lovely lady. And, um, I wasn't able to do much about it in high school because obviously it was still starting out, starting in 2012. Um, but as soon as I found out about it in college, I knew I had to be involved in any way I could. So I applied to be an ambassador, and lucky enough, I just got it. Right. And uh, how many ambassadors does Mississippi State have here? Um, we have 20 crew members, which is the most we're allowed to have, so it helps out a lot. Uh, we have ob officer positions, like pre not president, captain, vice captain, secretary, stuff like that. And it's a big help, you know, with social media. I mean, we're always posting things online and uh, setting up events and stuff. So 
it's really helpful. What kind of events do you have? Um, well, we actually um, are planning to co-host a 5K with the St. Jude Foundation at the end of March. So we'll be setting up tables, you know, helping out with a race um, and stuff like that. And we'll do like table events on campus, handing out information about cancer, like pediatric cancer and like what other people can do to get involved. Okay. So that's what we do. And um, where can people go to purchase these ha beanies or hats? Um, it's all online. Okay. Uh, you go to loveymelon.com and you can, we have hats, you know, beanies, baseball caps, shirts, coffee mugs, scarves. And uh, just make sure when you're checking out, you uh, click Mississippi State uh, on the drop down box and mm -hmm. I'll get credit for that and I'll be able to visit a child. Okay. And um, what if you want to be somebody else to become an ambassador? How do they go about doing that? Well, like I said, we have 20 members, which is uh, the maximum I'm allowed to have for some reason. Yeah. But um, so, but we do have a wait list for volunteers who mm -hmm. are allowed to volunteer, and then it's, when it's like seniors leave or if there's a conflict and someone can't participate, then the first you know first come first serve. Um, they can contact me if they see me on campus. They can uh, email me at lovermelon uh, at gmail.com, and it'll send that to me. And um, yeah. And are there any sites that people can visit besides that one, like on? Instagram or Facebook? Yes, uh, everything on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook is Lovermelon MSU. All right. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me. And um, coming up next, we have the police station is getting renovations. We'll tell you more after the break. The Starville Police Department is looking to renovate their headquarters at 101 East Lampkin Street. After a budgeting debate on February 16th, architect Gary Schaefer came forward with two different plans for the facility, one $3 million and the other $4.5. Both plans will cover plumbing and fire protection codes, a completely new roof, and a second floor for the administration staff. Police Chief Frank Nichols said the department would be happy with any renovation plan due to the multiple issues plaguing the current facility. A final vote was taken yesterday regarding the final presentation. We will have more on the story as it updates. For some Mississippi State students, it's not if the zombie apocalypse happens, it's when. This past week, MSU's Taito Club held their second annual zombie defense class. Participants learned various techniques and exercises to help combat the undead. When used properly, even a novice martial arts can bring down the living dead, besides, having, besides saving humanity. This event supported Startville in Motion, an organization that is dedicated to promoting maintenance and development of sidewalks, bike lanes, and trails in Octobaha County. The crown jewel of cinematography has finally found its place in deserving hands of actor Leonardo DiCaprio. The 41-year-old actor has finally ended his 22-year drought of going through his career without his golden statue due to a stellar performance in the critically acclaimed movie The Revenant. This movie, the third Oscar for the film, as it also won the Best Director and Best Cinematography. DiCaprio now joins a list of 78 actors who have given this award since the first ceremony in 1929. The MSU Student Association is hosting three trivia nights throughout the month of March in the Doghouse. Each trivia night has a theme, and the first one on March 8th features questions about the Star Wars franchise. Participants can sign up as a team for four for four dollars or as an individual for seven dollars. All money raised from the event will be donated to the Blair E. Bats and Children's Hospital in Jackson, Mississippi. Two weeks later, the trivia night will have a sports theme and on March 29th, questions will be about Disney. Students can register for the event in the Union. 
In honor of Black History Month, different organizations on campus are doing their part to raise awareness and foster diversity on campus. The Men of Excellence teamed up with the Residence Hall Association to produce the fifth annual Talented 100 competition. The name comes from civil rights activist W.E.B. Du Bois' essay entitled The Talented 10th, which suggests only 10% of minorities will be successful. MOX parliamentarian Charles Reese gives his take. Everyone, 100% of America is talented regardless of what, regardless of what talent you have, what, what, how, no matter how different it might be. Uh, we want to represent uh, Mississippi State University in a good light. We're saying that Mississippi State has talent. 100% uh, of our students are talented, 100% of our peers are talented, so tonight we're going to show that and we're going to present that in a way that will unite the university, especially with this diversity and inclusion conversation going on, but tonight is going to be a beautiful night, it's going to be a night of great experience, it's going to be it is going to be the best event that we've ever tried to do. So. Let the contestants entertain the large audience in Lee Hall with an assortment of singing, energetic dancing, instrumentals, and even spoken word poetry. The show was hosted by former SA president Jojo Dodd and president of the Kappa Beta chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha, Jeremy Knott. The two kept the audience entertained. It was just the energy, the atmosphere, it was just being tonight. Was just a great night. The top five contestants were chosen by a panel of judges, but it was the crowd that decided the three who would walk away with a cash prize. The third and second place winners took home $300 and $200, while Lanisha Turner took home the $500 grand prize. She had this to say about her big win. I said, if I won the prize money, I was going around out there giving some cheddar biscuits, and I'm still going. Thank you for watching Tate 30 News. Tune in for our next show next week.